Hey, welcome back to the channel everyone. Michelle and I are back out on the road. This time we're in Colorado on our way to Overland Expo West. This video will be stopping at a few of our favorite national parks, seeing some scenery, checking out the show, and then traveling home. So stay with us. What you doing this morning? Huh? What you doing? Well, we are going to cook a little bit of breakfast this morning. We got up this morning and did our, uh, our uh, work meeting and um, come down to the National Park. Uh, we were really close to the Great Sand Dunes National Park, so Visitor Center is not open, so I'm going to uh, make a little breakfast in the Visitor Center. Uh, just some, some scrambled eggs. So, And then we're uh, going to check out the Visitor Center, maybe take a little drive up to uh, just get a little closer to the dunes. So it's going to be... Um, Great Sand Dunes National Park and Preserve is located on the eastern edge of the San Luis Valley. The park contains the tallest sand dunes in North America, up to 750 feet. The dunes cover an area of about 30 square miles and are estimated to contain over 1.2 cubic miles of sand. happened because you always take your sand home with you right oh I had to double bag and I hate it when I have a poop bag that needs to be double bagged I can leave a mess yeah, <laughs> after spending a beautiful morning at the Great Sand Dunes National Park we continued west towards Bogosa Springs. And with no surprise, as we would gain elevation, we would see snow on the mountaintops. It sure was beautiful to see all the green trees still wrapped in a blanket of white snow. Well, after a long day of travel and uh, just uh, in general seeing some sights, which were great, uh, we have made ourselves uh, at home at the Mesa Verde National Park and the uh, campground there. Um, so we are definitely not alone here, but um, it gets us kind of close to what we want to see here, and that's that's dandy. We're going to go out uh, closer to sunset and see some of the see some of the sights down uh, inside the park a little further. So. Anyway, uh, we're cooking up a little dinner. I'll show you that and uh, making some tea and just uh, kind of rearranging the truck, getting things cleaned up after a couple, two, three days of travel. So stay with us. Well, this is going to be great. Uh, sunset's probably going to be beautiful. And where we're going in the park is going to be even better at sunset. So we're pretty excited. Here we go. So if you're wondering what this is, this is a pulled pork from Costco. And um, I have not tried it yet, although I've heard good things. And you just put it in a pot with some boiling water for a little while and it warms it right up and then michelle's making she's steeping some tea so this is her drink of choice for sure when we go out and it's way easier to make it for her because it's hard to find some places just a regular tea no sugar 
So, anyways, that'll be dinner. I think we got some cottage cheese or something like that in the uh, refrigerator too to go along with it. So, but there it is. As most of you know, Michelle is a bit of a national park junkie. So there was no way we were going to drive through Colorado again without visiting Mesa Verde National Park. Located in southwestern Colorado, Mesa Verde, or Green Table in Spanish, is an unparalleled opportunity to see and experience a unique cultural and physical landscape, including more than 4,000 known archaeological sites dating back to 550 AD. This national treasure protects the cliff dwellings and mesa top sites of pit houses, pueblos, masonry towers, and farming structures of the ancestral Pueblo people who lived here for more than 700 years. The cliff dwellings are some of the most notable and best preserved sites in the United States. After living primarily on the mesa top for 600 years, the ancestral Pueblo people began building structures under the overhanging cliffs of Mesa Verde. Decades of excavating and analysis still leave many unanswered questions, but have shown us that the ancient Pueblos were skillful survivors and artistic craftsmen. Continuing our journey towards Flagstaff, we happened to notice on the map as we left Mesa Verde that we were not far from the Four Corners area. As the only place in the United States where four states meet at one geographic location, the Four Corners area is unique. This area is also home to a rich indigenous heritage and marks the boundary between the Navajo Nation and the Ute Mountain Tribe Reservation. We made it to uh, Hoverland Expo West and uh, we're setting up the camp currently. Um, and as we're setting up camp, this noisy truck pulls in here, but he's unloading all the Grenadiers. So I think these are all the demos because they're dirty and they're filthy. So that's kind of cool but uh let's get a whole truckload of them <laughs> but uh yeah we're pretty excited it's gonna be a great little spot um we're camping with uh, some friends this weekend here in uh vendor camping and uh we're pretty excited so anyway we're gonna finish getting camp set up and just chill for this evening uh probably work on a little dinner later so we made it yay what do you think it's noisy right now though because everybody's moving around right no worse than sleeping in a K.O. with train tracks next to the highway. Yeah, that's no joke. This is much quieter than that. Mm -hmm. But anyway, we made it. Did you have any doubts whatsoever? No. No? The tundra did good? Okay. We think. It made a little squeaky noise this, mo this morning. And 140. Not... She probably needs a safety belt. Yeah, it probably needs a belt. I don't know. We'll see. I got to see if I can stop and get one. So, Anyways, we're going. my new chair. Oh yeah, somebody got a new bougie rocking chair. I don't know. <laughs> sure if I. But it worked out good for me because I got a new chair also. Oh, you okay, can't really. See, you do. You catched on. Oh. Yesterday it was not working out. Today it is completely working out. Yeah. Anyways. And we had a good doggie. And we know Ray doesn't like canned dog food. Yeah. Well, who does? So, so what? Are you, uh, what are you making there? Some fancy, fancy schmancy. Uh, steamed cauliflower with real butter and real good cheese. Oh my. And we have it with those bad boys right there. And then we're going to make some ribeyes? Yeah. And this is going to work out phenomenal. I got Brussels sprouts for one night and another thing of cauliflower. The only bad part is I might run out. I only brought three nights worth of vegetables. Ooh. Right. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, Saturday night. Sunday night. Man, you may have to go without vegetables. I think we're going to dinner Saturday night though. Cause we're gonna, cause we're, I think we're gonna go with Lauren and them. I'm gonna oh, try to get okay. with Lauren and go to dinner on Friday night or okay. Saturday night rather. Well, then we'll be cause right. they're Not doing a, Uber Eats. they're doing a partner's dinner with them. So. Well, we're good. Okay. 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 We gotta get her off. Look at that. Ooh. Look at that. I, if you could smell it, you'd understand. Smell what vision. Said. All right, Shell. Video time. What are you doing over there? Emails. Work. You're doing some work. We just finished up with some lunch. Made some lunch on the old scrabble. And. um Shell's answering some emails, doing some work, and enjoying it, and doing it in the sunshine, which is not a bad deal. It's been a busy little uh, work week with emails, so. Yeah, and we've had, so what did we do this morning? We cleaned trailers. Oh, uh, we've been scrubbing trailers. Got yep. our people set up. Our couple came in that's sitting with us, so everybody's good to go. 
yeah, huge, huge shout out to Scott and Tammy for uh, providing us with a summit for the weekend to show off. Uh, they're uh, they're currently took their Jeep and I think they were headed out to go to explore some probably trails Sedona. here. Probably Sedona, yeah. Yeah. So. But that's okay. We'll be uh, we'll be really excited to hear their stories when they get back and what they explored. We did get today our email confirming our tickets and uh, we should be receiving our SEMA tickets in the mail at home. Yeah, that's exciting. I can't wait for that trip with Bill and Deb. Yeah. So we're all set up. Join the sunshine. We'll probably get back up. I've got a, a couple dealers to go see. Um, just um, say hello and do some networking today. And um, yeah, get Michelle. Ready for the busy week. And ready, get ready for the busy weekend. Yeah, because tomorrow the show starts uh, right off in the morning and we'll be busy all the way through Sunday. So. Yeah, Ray's got to get some beauty sleep so he can sell some trailers. Don't you, Ray? Hi, Daddy. Yeah. We got, we got trailers to sell. We got trailers to sell, bud. Trail dogs? Where's the trail dogs? Good morning. Morning. <laughs> so it's Saturday morning Expo West, and we're gonna go wander around, just check some things out. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Still get run over by these crazy yeah. guys. Yeah. So we are. Uh, we're gonna go. <laughs> hey, what's up? Okay. There they are. <laughs> A couple guys on this. So that'll be us. So um, anyway, uh, we are gonna go just go check some things out before the show officially opens. Uh, oh my god! Look at him. I can't keep a clean dog. Look at that. He just rolls. He's, not, he's white. Yeah. And he wonders why he's going to sleep out under the tree tonight. Yeah. Ray, have you lost your marbles? Anyways, go, go along with us as we kind of walk around uh, and just check out some of the vendors. So, here we go. Overland Expos is celebrating its 15th year, starting in Prescott, Arizona in 2009. These Overland Expos have become so popular, there are now four of these events across the United States. Arizona, Oregon, Colorado, and Virginia. All of these events offer hundreds of vendors in the overland and camping off-road space. There is camping offered for vendors as well as spectators, classes that you can take, and just general community. Now, with over 70,000 attendees across all four events, if you're into overlanding, this is the place to be. Now, as I'd mentioned before, Michelle's a bit of a junkie when it comes to national parks. And because we were in Arizona and we weren't very far, she decided we needed to drive down and see some big cactus. The Saguaro National Park spans 92,000 acres and it consists of two separate areas, 
the Tucson Mountain District and the Rincon Mountain District. Popular activities in the park include hiking on its 165 miles of trails and sightseeing along paved roads near its two visitor centers. Both districts allow bicycling and horseback riding on selected roads and trails. What you doing, Shell? Yeah, what kind of ice cream? Bluebell. Bluebell? Yeah. It's nice pretty nice. Got us a nice little fire here. We oh, and the view, taking in a little sunset. It's been nice. It's been nice for sure. Kind of just reset today, right? Did a lot of chores and things like that, and we'll probably start traveling home tomorrow, huh? Be a couple, two, three days before we get there, though, huh? <laughs> so, but for now, we're gonna hang out here. <laughs> 